I'm Brad and welcome to Overkill Global, Bangers International Metal Review Show. Today, we're going to Denmark. We're gonna look at their very exciting death metal scene, which has been one of my favorite collectives of bands over the last, I don't know, five or so years. They've just been producing some really high quality content. Huge thanks to all of our fans and supporters for you know giving us suggestions and ideas. Speaking of, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. So Denmark is part of Scandinavia, but they always seem to get the short end of the stick when it comes to metal. I mean, you've got Swedish death metal and then you've got Norwegian black metal and Denmark's just over there like, hey, uh, we gave you Lars, King Diamond and Volbeat. You're welcome. If up until now you were like, nah, Sweden and Norway are good. They got the Scandinavian metal thing. Consider David Torture Dodd, which is a nickname that means torture death or something, which is badass. Uh, Mickelson, he runs Extremely Rotten Productions, which is not just a record label. It's a brick and mortar store for death metal that they are able to keep a death metal store open. Clearly got something going on there, okay? Because you're the expert. David? Hello. My name is David. I'm starting down here at Extreme Rotten Productions. I'll just talk a bit about some Danish death metal. So we're going to start off. I'm just doing an alphabetical order. There's a band called Ceremony. Coitus Interruptus Corpus Mortale. Despondent Soul. Detest. A band called Dominus. Second demo. There's a band that for some of you might know of later since they eventually turned into old beats, completely changing style. But earlier they were a very heavy death metal band, especially the vocals were some of the lowest, I'd say. One of my own favorites, Exhaust. The demo Escapism. Fallen Angel, the first one and the second one. It's some of the most brutal thing I think we had in the country, especially from that time. Frozen Sun, Idiosyncrasy, Ildis Post, Infernal Death, Inhumation, Iniquity, Legion of Darkness, which was two of the members from Dominos did after they left after the first demo. They made first another band called Domination and then turned into Legion, which was some very harsh grinding rules at the edge of being black metal, death metal, moratorium, revolting, phimosis. And then last I have some more sort of experimental death metal from a band called Stone Age. I always thought they were quite cool. Alright, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the newer stuff that has been going on here. Ascendancy, local band consisting of two brothers, so it's called Oda also because that's what they do. It's the best thing they've done I think. Okay, Ocean, and their EP that we put out on Extremely Rotten. The Inquisitor. Probably my favorite of the albums, even though I feel like everything they've done is great. Yeah, probably one of my favorite current death metal bands from here. And then we have Septich. They just put out a new EP also, but this is a debut EP. Stoiknos. Brenolith. Debut album, Desolate Landscape from 2017. A little bit biased because I play on it myself, but nonetheless, part of the scene here, so I needed to talk about it, I guess. And we have a solo project here, Sulfurus. The latest album from Wunagan. I'll delete from 2020. Some new releases coming out too. We've just been recording a lot of music over the last year since we haven't been able to play a lot of shows, but we've still been writing music. So currently there is 16 unreleased songs. That's going to be out on several splits and, uh, and some other things to be announced whenever things are ready. Finally, I have here a bit out of the circle from Copenhagen Vomit Angel, the debut album from 2019, imprint of extension on Iron Bonehead. Some more grinding death metal from people I used to play more black metal, I guess. Hope you enjoyed. A little bit of information on some things that I think was worth pointing out, at least. Danish death metal. Thank you so much, David. I mean, as of right now, I have yet to be to Scandinavia. So thank you for introducing us to the scene. Now it's time for me to choose my picks for five essential Danish death metal albums. And these are going to be just chronological. First up, we've got Dominus and their album View to the Dim which came out in 1994 on RRS. <laughs> singer of this band is one Michael Poulsen from Bullbeat. But this music sounds like fuck the world death metal. Michael's voice is just super powerful as you heard. Low, but doesn't feel like he's just kind of 
muttering. It feels like he's got the power. I want you to listen to this album and get your mind blown by the fact that this is the guy from Volbeat. So this is gonna be the shortest of my clips. Go listen to it. I'm gonna give this album four to five mind-blowing, that's the dude from Volbeat, Skulls. Next up, we've got Undergang and their album, and I'm gonna pronounce this so wrong, Indentat Ath Donen. This came out in January 2009, initially, on Sako Un Ojo Records. Okay, so this is really the band that kicked off this new wave of Danish death metal. This band is David, you know, from earlier. I said his name multiple times. This is his baby, all right? They really exploded in popularity off of their 2017 album, Misanthropology. You'd start to see that gory version of Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man everywhere. For the art averse metalhead, that piece is also the reference point for In Flames' Clayman album. I once read something in, in a metal magazine that a lot of these death metal bands sing as if they're, you know, in the crypts, getting high off the fumes of the corpses. This album sounds like autopsy and obituary. Did get high off the corpses, so it's got that weird demolich edge to it. And the clip that I played earlier kind of really shows that marriage between straightforward death metal and janky weirdo-ness. It starts with like a, more like a janky weirdo squealy riff before it gets like chunkier and more straightforward death metal. And then later they have a straightforward death metal riff with janky scronky squeals on top of it. Okay, as is the case with much of the modern death metal scene in general, the cavernous, as they call it, influence pervades. By that, I mean incantation and immolation. I would put them more on the immolation side of things. All of that is to say the autopsy and, and the obituary, like simplicity, it makes it a fun, groovy time, but you never know what's around the corner. So I'm just gonna say, listen to the whole album. It's really freaking good. I'm gonna give this album, I'm gonna give it five out of five, Skulls. Stop having fun, no more fun, stop it. Because next, we have Frenolith and their album, Desolate Endscape, which came out in May, 2017 on Dark Descent Records. The album starts out with like these three chimes, which kind of serve as like a warning bell alarm thing for the fucked up time that you're about to have. Again, stop having fun. This is terrifying music. So for those keeping track, this is David Torture Dodd once again, although here his vocals drop lower. Less fun, more nasty. Anyway, here he's joined by drummer Tuna, whose actual name is Powell Tunkiawik, who also plays in, you know, Hyperdontia, Apparatus, Sulfurus, and there's other band members here who play in Ascendancy, Mold, lots of bands, lots of incestuous things going on here. Despite having fast moments, like on the ironically titled Crawling Shadows, Slithering Tongues, and Dysmorphosis, the album has fast moments, right? But it still feels like a, like a slog to get through, and I mean that as a compliment. It's just really crushing. It's all summed up in this epic closer channeling of a seismic eruption, which appears to be depicted on the album cover. Like an eruption of a volcano, it's really fast and it goes, but then you know, 
the ash and the soot settles and fills the air and makes everything a trudge to get through this. You can't breathe, it's disgusting, okay? This is the aftermath. Started with the tail end of the eruption and then now you exist in the soot and the ash and the filth. And you can't breathe and you might die. This album will really appeal to fans of like a dead congregation, okay? I keep saying, okay. Okay. Okay? Okay. I don't know why, okay? Okay. Anyway, for this reason, I'm gonna give this album four and a half skulls out of five. All right, and next we've got Hyperdontia and their album Nexus of Teeth, which came out September 2018, once again, on Dark Descent Records. <laughs> Another David Torture Dodd project and you know similarly there are members from many other projects so yeah we've got David we've got Tuna but what separates this band is the fact that there are a couple Turkish transplants they've both done time in burial invocation and they both still play in decaying purity which is a really cool brutal death metal band if I were to put Hyperdontia on a spectrum with the two previous projects I would put this one probably like right in the middle it like shrinks but maintains the scronky energy atop the you know more straightforward groovy death metal of undergang but it really combines it with the more brutal filthy edge of frenolith there are definitely some morbid angel vibes here and i would argue that they pull from both the david vincent and the steve tucker areas it's a well rounded Azigothian. The vocals here feel very brutal and why would they not? We've got a couple members of Decaying Purity, but the high-pitched shrieks feel like particularly piercing and acidic. I'm also a huge fan of like the solos and the leads that come up here. There's this tap part in Teeth and Nails that leads like effortlessly into this like darkly emotional lead. A Spire and Thorn starts to see itself out on top of this like mournful lead, but then they like bring it back to the earlier intro, aggressive, fast, chaotic riff, okay? They do that a lot. They kind of do a moodier lead solo, whatever you want to call it. And then they bring it back to the crazy part just to end the song. It's cool. And for an album that's, you know, on 10 so much as a lot of this, Danish death metal is. This band is really good at being selective and particular with when they unveil and utilize different, you know, tools in their toolboxes. This comes down to even the samples, but when there are all these elements used sparingly, masterfully crafted in and around one another in a way that's both weird and brutal and straightforward, but not, you get nexus of teeth with very off-putting album art you know you're in death metal there's not a lot of album art that you know puts you off anyway if i was rating the cover i would give this like a million out of five because it freaks me the fuck out but i'm not i'm rating the album and i'm gonna give the album four out of five skulls and finally we've got bass and their album Necrosapiens, which came out March 2021 on Century Media. started their career off 
with that ash letter, that A with the E on it, which when put together in place of the A and the E in their name means brute in their native Danish. And these guys are definitely brutes of the death metal variety, but they are very efficient. Since their 2018 debut LP, Dance Macabre, came out, they have averaged a new album every one and a quarter year. So that's like every 15 months, okay? Oh, that's brutal. This isn't, you know, a case of quantity over quality, because there's still quality in spades. This album is the band's most accessible, no doubt. It's rooted in the HM2, you know, sound, that Swedish death metal sound, which in and of itself is a more accessible version of death metal. But there are even more like mellow death leanings. I'd even argue that maybe some of these leads are inspired by the new wave of British heavy metal, which brought the melody into mellow death, you know? The title track, Necro Sapiens, sounds like, like I shit you not, it sounds like Death Clock. That's brutal. And let me tell you why that's an accessible thing. Death Clock made, as far as I remember, and according to my research, the best-selling death metal album of all time, okay? So this is definitely accessible. I mean, just saying Necro Sapiens and the way that it's said in the chorus sounds like something that would come out of Nathan Explosion's mouth, like Necro Sapiens, come on. Overall though, the band that I would associate most with Based is Bloodbath, specifically their album, The Fathomless Mastery. The singer of this band, Simon, is more of a dead ringer for Michael Ackerfeld than, than anything. But these guys are far from just a clone. Take for example, the song that played earlier, Towers of Suffocation, which reminds me of more of the, like, the mid to fast paced songs like Slaughtering the Will to Live or At the Behest of Their Death, which kind of effortlessly sag from like a faster part to a more chunky part and back and forth and back and forth. But the freaking groove, dare I say, breakdown in the middle of this song is just so damn fun and groovy and catchy, but crushing. The part that precedes it actually has this like blackened death metal sound a la behemoth. And then on top of all that, you've got the blast fest that is Meat Hook Massacre. Hella fun. This album is hella fun. And I'm gonna give it four to five skulls. I've said a lot of the same names over and over again. There's a lot of crossover in this. And I don't know if it's because the scene is relatively small, but I think another thing that's interesting is that some of these bands have started to reach beyond their borders. And I think the scene is on a great trajectory to grow just based on the quality of the music. But I think that doing this will really help them bring more influences and develop a sound that is uniquely Danish. So now we've got honorable mentions as chosen by our supporters. So first up, the overwhelming answer which most people were leaning on was Taphos. Dave Emerson shouts them out and shouts out their drummer as insane. They had an album called Come Ethereal Somberness which came out in June 2018 on Blood Harvest, worth checking out. Falksifer Rex agreed with that pick, as did Carl Wilspang, who also brought up Sulfurous. They've got an album called Dolores Death Knell, which came out in November 2018, and it was an independent release in tandem with Night Shroud Records, so you're gonna wanna check that out. Carl also suggested Septage, who accidentally released their debut demo, Septic Decadence, in September 2020. Actually, the drummer of Taphos, Ugur Yildirim, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, plays in this band too, as well as Ascendancy. Damn. This dude is busy. He's also a Turkish expat as well. And finally, Dan Nielsen shouted out Conkra, so I've got to give it up for their album. Sexual Affective Disorder, which came out in 93 on Progress Red Records. It's a lot of Danish death metal, a lot of quality music. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. This was a lot of fun. Have a great day. <laughs>